Okay, welcome everybody at this uh, EGI conference 2021. I would like to you, welcome you warmly to this conference, which is still an online meeting, something that we by now have come to find normal. But I hope that our EGI community will be able to meet each other face to face at some point in time, because that is what we are, a community. We have been working together now, I think, for more than two decades. We are a federation of organizations providing resources for a common good, scientific research. We come from a legacy of federating computing infrastructure and are moving into federating infrastructure and research software data and applications. Federation is our competence, our core competence. What I see is that the boundaries are blurring between the various flavors of computing. We see high throughput, throughput computing, high performance computing, cloud computing, all together simply because research needs it. We see the concept of federation being taken up in industry, such as with the Gaia X initiative. We see federation of data and applications to support data intensive research communities. And this is all there to enable open science, which is also the remit of the European Open Science Cloud. And this is why I believe that there cannot be a distinction between EOSC and e-infrastructures, as some people believe there is. The EGI Federation rests on uh, strong pillars, the, the NGIs. And as, as have I stated many times before, I believe it is very important that each of these national building blocks of the EGI Federation is uh, very well embedded in its own national e-infrastructure context. This national level is where I see that much of the consolidation of interests will take place. And by the way, in the parallel session, envisioning and envisioning the future following this morning's plenary, Fotis Karyanis will recap EIRG's work on these uh, national nodes. Now, this consolidation of all these interests uh, needs to be further worked out on the European level. I see that the EOSC developments bring all interested parties together and allowing EGI to co collaborate with uh, other pan European e infrastructures and research infrastructures. And I believe this should intensify in the coming years. Well, speaking about uh, our members, this year we uh, pay tribute to some anniversaries. So in the upcoming plenary session, we will have our French colleague, Yann Chen, tell about 50 years of Ian de Petrois, and our Croatian colleague, Ivan, about 50 years of SRCE, and the Wednesday plenary will have Antonio Zoccoli tell about 70 years of INFN. And in the closing plenary on Thursday, our Czech colleague Helmut will recount on 25 years of Chesnet. Now, of course, I should note here that my own home base, NICEF, dates from 1946 and is now 75 years old. And we had a really nice party last Friday to celebrate. We have some other good news to mention. Austria, through ARCONET, has been admitted as new participant of EGI recently. And we will have the application of Lithuania on the agenda of the next council meeting in November. And having these new participants, which include scientific communities, really adds to our strength. They push the boundaries of research and thereby the boundaries of the technologies needed. One of our new members, Sylvie, uh, Sylvie Lusson, Director of Research uh, at uh, CNRS, representing the INIS community, will give a keynote on climate modeling on Thursday. So I have given you some hints of the program uh, of the EGI conference. Um, and with this, this short introduction, which I promised to, uh, uh, to be short, I hand over the word to Tiziana. But first, I wish you all a very fruitful conference. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here with you and to welcome uh, you in uh, this conference. We have about uh, 450 uh, colleagues registered that will uh, tune in during the three days. 
and um, I just regret that we cannot meet uh, physically in one place uh, to shake hands. I'm uh, very well aware that many of you have been um, affected by uh, the recent pandemic, uh, having lost uh, uh, dear people. And um, I would say today and in this week, we are celebrating science together. Um, our mission is to support the science, and this is the way we have chosen to support our society. So I hope that during these days at the conference, uh, we'll uh, hear a lot about our scientists, the scientific achievements. And um, this year, we couldn't really celebrate uh, better by having our members uh, in the spotlight uh, talking about the scientific excellence they deliver, talking about the investments at national and research level to enable science. And this is the way we want to celebrate uh, really um, our internal members and the scientific excellence that uh, they make possible. Before I start with my introductory presentation, I'd like to uh, bring your attention to some housekeeping rules. Uh, please keep your microphone and video uh, deactivated. Unless we are in the question and answer phase, you can use the raise hand uh, function to make our uh, discussion more interactive. And you're welcome to share your impressions and experiences on Twitter uh, using EGI 2021 and mention the EGI infrastructure. So enough for uh, thanks and uh, introductions, and uh, I'm ready to start uh, my first uh, presentation. With these um, few slides, I'd like to bring uh, your attention to the latest achievements, what is the status of scientific computing with the EGI Federation today, and at the same time to give you perspectives on how the EGI Federation and our scientific communities are moving forward and pushing ICT innovation in our uh, technical domain. And with my presentation, I will really uh, focus on what is the impact of scientific computing and how innovation is bringing us ahead uh, through co-design and the involvement of our scientific communities. I like first to give you an idea of how science is benefiting from the federated infrastructures, which come thanks to the national investments and in our research organizations and the federation. And to give you an idea of how scientific communities are being supported by our community. I'm very glad, uh, first of all, to report that uh, this year uh, we have exceeded uh, 77,000 users, which is a 8.6 annual increase of active users. This is an amazing result and it's a steady uh, process that we have been maintaining during the last uh, decade. And uh, the scientific impact estimated, uh, thanks to open air, as the number of scientific uh, publications, which are open access, exceeds 1,600 papers in 2020. This is a very high level um, impact. During the conference in these days, we will hear about uh, many scientific communities, their uh, activities, how they are innovating and advancing the scientific computing. And I hope you will be there to listen about how these communities make this impact possible. Uh, for me, it's always uh, thrilling to, to be really with the science and uh, to listen about uh, the researchers. Uh, this is what brings the value to EGI and sustainability. And uh, this conference gives ample space to hear the voice uh, of our demand side. Scientific communities have been uh, significantly evolving in the last uh, five years, our strong legacy, which rests on physics, astronomy and astrophysics and astroparticle physics, in, is now incrementally enabled and complemented by medical and health sciences, where we have uh, today 53% of users, thanks to very successful 
community of practices which support um, science in the domain of neuroinformatics and uh, structural biology. This is a trend we have been uh, seeing in the last five years, but it's continuing as well, um, in particular, thanks to the federated cloud. And um, in the federated cloud, thanks to the possibility to have novel mechanisms of running scientific computing, we have much more support of environmental science, which is the fastest growing uh, sector in terms of support in science uh, of uh, EGI. The support to science would not be possible uh, without our members. And uh, we had uh, six uh, different members, mostly from uh, scientific communities of pan-European relevance in 2021. And as mentioned by Arian, we are really glad to see that uh, national uh, investments are also consolidating, making scientific computing possible, thanks to these uh, ICT infrastructures. And we are welcoming uh, ACONET as Austrian uh, mandated organization from 2022. And the Lithuania uh, through the Vilnius University is an applicant expected to apply for membership in 2021. So thanks to our members, of course, and thanks also to the trust uh, of new organizations that after more than 10 years from the foundation of EGI.eu, are uh, believing in our mission and contributing with their excellence to its achievement. We have today 27 members, of which 21 represents uh, entities of uh, national um, relevance or having a national mandate, five international research organizations and one uh, uh, organization in its own remit. How is uh, scientific computing uh, changing its, um, its role in the, um, in the last few years and evolving? Um, we know scientific, community, uh, scientific communities cannot uh, do science today without um, accessing data, without having uh, high throughput computing cloud and high performance computing uh, resources. And uh, the fundamental importance of scientific computing has been demonstrated through a history of a steady increase in use of uh, federated resources. And there's a diagram on the left the panel, you see the uh, uh, trend of I I HTC Federation. And on the right, the amazing trend we have been achieving with the federated cloud. Um, for HTC, we recorded a plus 24% uh, usage last year, and for the cloud, an exponential growth with a plus 60% just the last year, and this is a steady uh, trend that we are seeing. We like to highlight the role of the, of the federated cloud as an important uh, computer platform that is enabling uh, the federation to deliver uh, new uh, services and different access models to computing and storage. We have today the largest uh, federated uh, cloud uh, infrastructure at European level, encompassing 25 uh, different cloud providers. And we are very glad to report that this year we are moving towards a global open science cloud, thanks to the, to the contribution and integration of the ICT resources of the Chinese Academy of Science with uh, CAS. New members joined during 2021 and are making new sciences uh, uh, possible and new discoveries possible, thanks to the integration of research data. I'd like to bring uh, the attention uh, to the importance of this new uh, platform, which is picking up uh, in usage, as I already reported, with one example of a scientific community active in uh, space science, which is the iSCAT uh, uh, scatter radar, with iSCAT and the contribution to the federated uh, cloud of China. We are progressing towards the federation of open data, which is uh, collected from different uh, scatter radars in different geographic regions in Europe and China. 
they are moving towards a federated processing. And what they are expecting is that this open data will be transferred and processable, processable at high performance across uh, uh, different data centers that will collaborate for delivering uh, uh, experiments of common relevance. It's always, uh, for me, amazing and uh, thrilling to see how the federation model is continuing and uh, asserting its importance, always driven by the need of accessing and sharing open data, which has been, uh, for those who were here at the foundation of EGI, the driving reason of uh, creating our federation. During uh, the last couple of years, uh, we are opening to new scientific domains. So not just uh, reinforcing the role of a federation, uh, but also um, making it possible with new scientific domains. And here, I like to mention two new starting research infrastructures that were recently introduced on the S3 roadmap, so big data and operas, both active in the social sciences and humanities. Um, these collaborations not only allow to exploit existing and proven solutions, but also uh, to innovate with this community and uh, introducing new advancements in what we deliver for the benefit of the existing uh, and many user communities. This is a tangible sign, sign of support to the long tail of science, to the research infrastructures, which represent big data communities, big science, which is coordinated at European level. And we are very lucky of the coordination uh, support that uh, ESRI is delivering, as ESRI projects have been uh, growingly an important driver of EGI and demonstrating increasing adoption of uh, scientific computing. So we are grateful for this coordination, which makes reaching out to user communities more effective and powerful. We are also grateful uh, to the European Commission funding programs and the European Open Science Cloud for the support that they are enabling uh, to bring scientific computing closer uh, to the long tail of science and communities of practice. These are the communities that are more difficult to support, that have a bespoke requirements, which need a lot of technical assistance and technology transfer in order to make their science possible through scientific computing. And through the EGIA's project, which is our main flagship project, we are making this possible. We have uh, every year four cutoff dates, the next one uh, will be in December. We invite new projects, running projects of Horizon Europe and Horizon 2020 to come to us and get support to enable their data-driven science with our national uh, computing facilities. And this diagram shows you the diversity and ample reach of these uh, support actions. More and more scientific communities are requesting uh, um, this uh, professional uh, consultancy as one of the major added values. And this will be one of the directions of future development for the GI Federation. What we want to achieve together is to strengthen our human networks and make training and user support thanks to your national engagement possible and more widely available to scientific communities. With EGIAs, uh, we are very lucky to pull uh, centrally managed and coordinated uh, uh, resource center with more than 80, 80 million CPU hours and the 20 petabytes of storage available for the exploitation of data for those communities that are not uh, resourced in-house. In i like now to move to my second part. And here i like to give you some uh, highlights about the technical innovation that we have been achieving. This has been possible thanks uh, to projects, thanks to the uh, stronger collaboration with our sister infrastructures, 
uh, Jian, OpenAir, and EUDAT, and collaboration with research infrastructures of S3. During the conference in these days, uh, you will have a lot of technical sessions, so we would really like to invite you to follow these uh, workshops and presentations. Um, they will give you uh, more technical information on how we are advancing the technical infrastructure, but also give you the opportunity to influence its future direction. I like, for example, to mention the uh, service uh, portfolio evolution session that will happen uh, today after the opening plenary, where we will present our future ideas uh, on how we would like to evolve our infrastructure. And we will also give you an opportunity to give a feedback and also participate in surveys to give us a clear message on how our ICT infrastructure should change and evolve in the coming decade. I'd like to first uh, give uh, many thanks uh, to the scientific communities that have been uh, engaging the EGI uh, community, uh, bringing them in funded projects, which are our innovation uh, pillars. A lot of this innovation is possible thanks to the commitment of the European Commission and our member states. And uh, thanks to these uh, um, co-design activities, we will uh, definitely manage to shape the evolution of our service portfolio. In this uh, landscape, uh, the European Open Science Cloud is of course uh, playing a key role. And uh, this key role is uh, demonstrating how fruitful collaboration at European level can be to support the scientific communities. And I will give you some highlights. I'd like to start with uh, access services and uh, federated AEI. Federated AEI is a paradigm, uh, a new way of enabling access for our scientists, which thanks to single sign-on and federation of different community proxy AEI infrastructures can get uh, easier access to what is being funded and operated nationally. This is a major shift that will take probably another 10 years to be completed, it implies a profound changes in terms of what policies our scientific communities support, how um, identities are being managed by identity providers. And um, the final outcome will be that what has been traditionally very difficult to access in terms of authentication and authorization will be more and more uh, accessible to our scientists at all levels of scale, the long tail of science and also the big collaborations. In these diagrams, you can see the increase in number of registered users. This is a trend for 2021. And then an increase in number of active logins in our federated AEI service, which is uh, checking. There are tangible uh, outreach uh, results that I like to mention. Uh, again, in the context of AEI, we have been managing uh, to integrate uh, Chinese resources in our federated cloud, being, bringing AEI, federated AEI um, possible also for our scientists in China. We are collaborating with uh, Jian and the Panusk community in photon and neutron science. Uh, to make sure that their community uh, identity provider umbrella ID can be integrated and uh, seamlessly um, uh, accessible in order to uh, have a computing through the EGI Federation available for their data needs. And finally, the collaboration effort again with Jian for the delivery of the EOSC Live AEI community proxy which is also a joint effort of important research infrastructures in the life science domain, Elixir, BBMRI, Aerobioimaging, InfraFrontier, and Instruct. Moving to a different uh, technical area, data and application, I'd like to stress what uh, Arian uh, mentioned at the very beginning. Uh, federation is becoming the paradigm for big science, and for every community, even the long tail that is challenged by the need of having a data intensive access 
or compute intensive access. The EGI community, thanks to funding and projects, is evolving our, our data management infrastructure by having better mechanisms to make uh, open research data available to uh, scientific communities as an integral part of our infrastructure. We started as a infrastructure as a service. Infrastructure as a service, meaning that uh, we uh, have a strong experience and legacy in federating computing and storage resources. We are extending these uh, with um, cloud and high performance computing resources operated nationally. The infrastructure layer is now increasingly accessible through federated computing uh, solutions, orchestration, and the platform as a service on orchestration tools, workload management, federated computing, federated identity management, and federated data management are three large areas of innovation in AGI, which make um, data spaces possible. Data space according to the um, well-established paradigm, is an integrated environment which brings scientific data and applications together in a federated manner and transparent manner for the end user. And through the EGIA's project, we are experimenting these with uh, different uh, four sectors, uh, environmental science, health data, fundamental science data, and humanities. The Data Hub is one of the most uh, recent services uh, in uh, data management. It's an uh, important shift in paradigm. It allows the scientific communities to host or mirror research data that they preserve in the cloud and in the HTC HPC Federation, so that the scientists don't need to download any more data in their local lab or local computer. They have a large amount of data, typically public data resources, which cannot be efficiently downloaded locally, available remotely in a virtual manner, and processable through their applications. The Data Hub is being successfully uh, tested in different projects, and I like to mention here the Letha project, EU Hubs for Data, the LAGO experiment with Latin America and EUSC Synergy and partners with photon and neutron communities. You will hear more about how uh, the Data Hub can be integrated with scientific applications in the demos and different sessions during the conference. And I'd like also to give you an idea of how scientific uh, applications are evolving uh, more and more into research uh, objects. An example is offered by Jupyter Notebooks. Jupyter Notebooks are um, data analytics tools which make, um, uh, which provide a graphical interface to scientific communities. They can be offered as a managed service with uh, more than 100 active users in 2021. But they can be also offered to specific scientific communities as a service which is fully integrated and managed for them. And here at the bottom of the slide, you see how different uh, domains can benefit from the availability of data analytics as a service. And with this, I'd like to move to the last area of innovation, which is the computing continuum and artificial intelligence uh, for better support to simulation and modeling. Simulation and modeling are uh, fundamental elements of uh, scientific uh, processing. Um, they have been established as one of the major drivers of the EGI Federation since the times of its design with the creation of the distributed data infrastructure of LHC. But there are still um, a problem when communities need to access uh, huge amounts of, in the order of petabytes of data which is generated by their observatories and sensors. And uh, simulation and modeling are now moving increasingly towards the adoption of artificial intelligence. This supposes the question of how the GI Federation will make AI available as an integral element of its infrastructure. 
during 2021, 2021 we are tackling this problem uh, through two initiatives, the flagship project EGIAs, which I already mentioned, and through EGIAs and a number of uh, high performance computing uh, providers, we are uh, experimenting the federation of HPC, HTC and cloud resources. We are enabling federated AEI across uh, the computing continuum. We are making uh, workloads portable thanks to containers across different heterogeneous computing infrastructures. And we are experimenting data transfer across HPC and HTC nodes. This diagram is an architecture of a new project that we have submitted for evaluation to the European Commission that also aims to further build new and novel comp uh, components on top of uh, the digital continuum, which will deliver dedicated AI machine learning services, big data analytics and data fusion, which are all accessible through workflow composition and accessible to different thematic modules that will be delivered, maintained, operated by scientific communities which in the end will support the digital, the different digital twin applications. The message uh, that brings to us is that more and more the EGI Federation is moving from a federation of physical facilities into a federation which delivers uh, federated access and adding value services for specific uh, scientific applications. And finally, I'd like to uh, give a view of how the EGI Federation has been uh, contributing to the European Open Science Cloud. It's a very important initiative that makes innovation possible and collaboration. And here I'd like to uh, bring uh, the results of EOSCAP as one of our flagship projects which concluded uh, this year. USCAB uh, contrib contributed uh, significantly to all areas of uh, development of EOSC. And this diagram, which is uh, the, um, uh, from the EOSC Future Project, shows what are the areas where EOSCAB and the DJI community, community contributed to. I'd like to start mentioning the internal services in the hub portfolio, which are the Federation services of EOSC. The rules of participation, which is a fundamental element of the policies, service management for professional delivery are the core to EASC, the portal and the marketplace as access instruments, interoperability and integration guidelines to make services composable, a number of horizontal facilities coming from the EGI Federation. Indigo Data Cloud Technologies and EUDAT facilities, complemented by thematic uh, services, which come from our scientific communities of the EGI Federation. And also DOC uh, support the channels towards business, SMEs and industries through the Digital Innovation Hub and dedicated support uh, delivered uh, to new user communities. All of this has been a, a joint effort I want to thank the EGI community for its commitment, but also all the collaborators that have been uh, working together with the, us with EGI to make this possible. And the impact has been a strong legacy for the implementation of uh, EOSC in the second phase, which started in 20, 2021. Uh, we managed to deliver a growing user community with uh, tens of early adopter pilots, tens of the digital innovation hub pilots, more than 5,000 people trained, interoperability guidelines to make the EOSC exchange part of the infrastructure possible, and many uh, thematic services and research infrastructure um, services supported. You will hear more about EOSC and our supporting workshops and demonstrations just after this plenary today. I like to um, also show how integration and collaboration of our infrastructures uh, can make science uh, better. And uh, with this, I like to focus again how notebooks as research objects 
can today uh, be discovered thanks to open air services. Uh, notebooks as research objects can be shared by scientists and reused and adopted with Zenodo, again, an open air service, and can deposit their out outputs, our output research data, with services coming from the EU DAT infrastructure. And all of this is possible thanks to ESC. So to conclude, um, the EGI Federation has been continuing uh, its support to science with a steady growth of its user base. We still see distribution of uh, human capacity, human networks for training and support to be critical for our future success. Data scientific applications and the computer continuum will be the continue, continual trend for the coming five years and our set and scientific projects. And we will continue being uh, uh, one of the uh, pillars of European Open Science Cloud with technical solutions for the core and by delivering its computer platform, thanks to the funding of the EGIA's uh, project. And with these conclusions, I want to thank you for your attention, for your time, and also thank my colleagues at the EGI Foundation. I'm very proud of the staff which is uh, making this conference possible, that contributed input to this presentation, and also uh, fundamental uh, in delivering a lot of coordination functions that make this scientific impact uh, possible. So thank you, and uh, back to you, Arjen. Thank you very much, uh, Tiziana, and uh, I uh, 